Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Village of Bartlett Committee of the Whole meeting for October 5th, 2021. I call this meeting to order and again ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Daney? Here. Danzi? Here. Gunstein? Here. Hopkins? Here. Rinky? Absent. Sawanski? Absent. President Wallace? Here. First item we have is under Building and Zoning, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. We will cover the Clover Communities Concept Plan. With that, I will turn it over to Roberta. Thank you, Trustee Hopkins. Um, tonight, the petitioner is requesting a concept plan review for a 119-unit market rate senior independent living development on just over 10 acres located on the west side of 59 and south of Schick Road. Um, the building would contain four one-bedroom units and 115 two-bedroom units. The proposed three-story building would consist of a combination of brick and siding on all building elevations, with each unit having a patio or balcony. The site plan identifies 121 parking spaces, and this does exceed the zoning ordinance requirement of 40 spaces, or one space for every three senior dwelling units. The development proposal identifies a new right-in, right-out along Route 59, a connection to the private drive to the north, and a potential future cross-access to the property to the south. The petitioner has submitted an impact analysis for the proposed use change from commercial to multifamily senior housing, and that is contained in your packet. And I believe the petitioner is here tonight, so if you have any very specific questions on that, she'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Is there any questions from the committee? Comments, concerns? I like the plan. I, I think it's very well thought out. I think it's definitely a need that would fill what Bartlett is looking for. So, Senior Senate? So those are my thoughts. We're moving this on to the plan commission, correct? No, this is just concept. Concept. Oh, concept, okay. But the plan commission will review it at some point, right? When, when they submit a full application? Yeah, okay, I'm with you. Good. Is the only access proposed off of Route 59, or is there No, one? there's a proposed access on the north um, uh, private drive in the back, and then in the, staff asked for a third access point leading to the property to the south. Okay. So it would be cross-access easement and, and connected. Would the petitioner like to say anything? Keep it short. I know. I know. I, I know. I read in here somewhere like how many other places that you folks operate, but I can't find it now. What? Yeah. So we have over 60 properties yeah. um, from northeast to the Midwest. Uh, we are Thank new you. to the Illinois market. We are currently about the same place in the process as <sighs> Crystal Lake. So between Crystal Lake and Bartlett, we hope that these will be our first two properties in Illinois. We've been doing this for over 35 years. We exclusively do senior market rate independent living. So we find ourselves in a niche market where we're not the cruise ship lifestyle uh, property and we're also not the rent and subsidized property. So we're in between. We don't yeah. provide medical services. We are truly an independent experience. Uh, we absolutely love the location of this property. We think we'll be very good neighbors to the residential um, that we abut. If you've seen the site plan, you know, we're 100 feet away from anything and we won't disturb that property. So we enjoy the green space as much as you do, as much as the property owners do. We think we can be really good neighbors and I'd like to answer any questions or provide any additional information to you. Typically, what would your rents be? So our rents would average around $1,600 a month. Okay. And I know you have vacancies because you're under construction, but I might be able to see in a year or so. <laughs> well, hopefully it might be a little closer to two years, but we'll keep the light. got to wait that long. <laughs> Is there an age requirement? Yes. So all of our properties are limited to 55 and older. 
Did you meet that, Ray? Not definitely. <laughs> he, not yet. He not yet. Maybe not. This might be a question for staff. Have we, did we propose any other sites to this particular concept? The only reason why I bring that up is, is 59 seems to be the, the golden throne of where we're going to find the rest of our retail for the rest of the stretch of Bartlett. I, so, I, I can say that this site has attracted several senior housing um, well, we had a concept yeah. not long ago. Right, exactly. So it's very popular for that use. But I'm just wondering, are there any other 10-acre plots that maybe be tucked away somewhere, like one we might be considering some other things for? or We, we always try to, to give several sites when we meet with people. So this, this was their number one choice. Yeah. Would be for like an Aldi or something, too. Yes, correct. <laughs> That's my only concern is just that we're putting a a uh, potential use on the busiest highway that we have that is not going to be um, heavily tax generating. So that's prime, my concern. Prime retail property. Yeah, it's prime retail. This is, this is some of the few parts of Bartlett that we have left that, that we can market to um, the prime retail outlets. So, so this that's is my concern. 10 acres? Yes, and it is zone commercial currently. Mm -hmm. That's and if I may, the, one of the limiting factors on that commercial is that it's a write-in, write-out only. Mm -hmm. um, on Route 59, yeah. there will not be a full interchange there, so it's yeah, very You're going to have access from 7-Eleven probably and access... No, it's actually past 7-Eleven, so where the uh, dental building is, yeah. uh, where their parking lot is, um, it's to the left on the screen of that right yeah. there. So that's a, um, it's a private drive access that was created as an easement. Uh, we did a full traffic study and we're a very low traffic user, so we won't have an issue with the Schick Road um, movements. I mean, any, any, any retail um, operation that you see up and down 59, no matter what location it's at, it's got to write in, write out. So really that's no different than any other location anywhere. You're not, unless you're sitting right on the corner like Schick there, you're always going to have a right in, right out. Uh, that's my concern for the boards. I have to agree. I, what? That, I, I cherish this kind of property for Bartlett for <coughs> specific uses, and what? this would not be my number one. What made you choose this property over other ones, and what other ones did you look at in town? Um, we looked at se several properties in town. It's been a while, so I do apologize for okay. recalling specifically. Uh, but this property was chosen because it was marketed specifically to us from the ownership of the property. Uh, they reached out to us. They've had a couple proposals on the land that were all residential in nature mm -hmm. and felt that we could be a, a good user for the property based on the purchase price. Um, does, our, does your operation really take up... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's okay. Does it really take up all 10 acres? No. No, we don't take up 10 acres. I can fit pretty comfortably on six to seven because acres. The, the, the previous concept that we had that I really liked for this particular site was the 55 and older in the back and retail all along the front. That's what I really liked. So there is pretty significant wetland along Route 59 that would be prohibitive to um, going up front there, right? Uh, it's being circled currently, so there and further. Um, I mean, we would be willing to parcel the property further to the south, uh, possibly for that corner on Army Trails, should that be developed. Yeah. Okay. I, have, I have a quick question for staff. On that property, has there been any inquiries or is there anything currently planned for the corner of Army Trail 59, and is it the same owner? It is not the same owner. and. Um, it is not in the village. It's unincorporated. Right. Okay. Right. Just that corner is unincorporated? It's well, and, and the church, and the church next it. to it, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Then we will wait for the full submittal from you guys, and we'll go from there. Okay. That's all we have under building and zoning tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, Finance and Golf, Chairman Daney. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, only item we have this evening is proposed 2021 property tax levy. And uh, with that, 
I'm going to ask Todd to address the uh, diet of the board. Thank you, Trustee. Uh, tonight we'll be uh, introducing the proposed property tax levy, uh, 2021 property tax levy. This all starts with the with our um, with our budget. Let's see. Having some technical problems. Oh, there it goes. Sorry. Uh, so it, it, all, it all starts with our budget process uh, in April when we pass the budget it includes funding for the general fund, um, funds to pay our debt service, our general obligation in principal and interest, and also our, our police pension contribution is what's covered by our annual tax levy. It is divided between the three counties that we're in. Uh, the state does this calculation every year. It changed slightly this year. Cook County went down a little bit, 30, just uh, just over 39%. DuPage, just over 60%. King County is up to 0.43 now. So just, uh, I think they went up three hundredths of a, of a point there. So again, uh, the dates to drive this, April we passed the budget, May 1 our year begins. Uh, in the fall, right now we start reviewing the property tax levy and then we collect the money uh, next year. So we actually collect the money after the fiscal year is over. This, this goes to fund the current year we're in, even though we collect the, collect the money later. This is the property, the proposed levy compared to last year's extension for, for truth and taxation purposes. We compare the current levy to the prior year's extension. Extension means the levy plus the loss factor that the counties add to it. In Cook County, it's 3% for the general and the police pension levy, 5% for debt service. In DuPage County, they add 1% across the board. So for truth and taxation purposes, it would be a uh, increase of 0.79%. That's the percent change for just the general corporate and the police pension levy. And the total decrease would be $5,877 for a decrease of 0.05%. That's just what's uh, below the extension from last year. So for, but uh, I like to show actual levy from this year compared to the actual levy last year. Uh, that makes more, more sense to me, even though um, for, the, for the law, it's compared to the extension. So. For this year, we're showing an increase of $86,000 in the general fund. That's for the brush pickup program. Uh, police pension uh, levy is increasing $135,718, or just about 6.5%. And our debt service levy is staying pretty flat, uh, increasing just $2,174. Uh, so it's a total increase, $223,892, or just under 2%. Uh, here's more detail on our debt service levy. This includes all of our all of our general obligation bonds, total of four million seven hundred thousand. Uh, the abatements, 2017 bonds. That's the fire station bonds, and the fire district pays their portion. That's outside of the village, and we also get a contribution about twenty eight thousand from the Brewster Creek TIF for the for the TIF area. Uh, so the total fire station obligation from the village, $249,066. 2019 geo bonds, those are the 2009 refunding bonds, and then we abate the portion that's paid from the sewer fund. So the total net levy, 974,000. 2021A, that's the bonds that were issued for uh, the DuPage Water Commission refunding. Uh, so it's all paid from the water fund. 
and the 2021 B bonds. Uh, I got to look at my notes here. That's uh, 2012 bonds that were refunded. Those were for a streets project and the stormwater sewer project up on North Avenue. So the total net levy, 2,944,649. Here's our levy history. Uh, going back to 2011, 2012, <coughs> our general levy peaked $7,058,094. So uh, we are down 539,000 from that. Um, we were flat for quite a while at 6433000 and have shown an increase of 86,000 this year. For the police pension levy, I'm just comparing our levy, our annual returns. Uh, we did have a very good uh, year of returns last year, so we're on the fiscal year. This is from May 1, 2020 to April 30, 2021, just over 25%. Uh, uh, this will these these investments will be uh, consolidating with the rest of the uh, downstate police pension funds. Um, spring, summer of 2022, we were about the same um, investment return as the IMRF for the calendar year of 2020. So we we uh, did pretty good last year. So the police pension fund had a 25 percent return. Yes. Yeah, our funds are invested just about 65% in the stock market and then the uh, the rest of it in fixed. Uh, so we we did very well. We were um, now for the actuarial purposes and for the funding purposes, this uh, large increase is smoothed or spread out over three years. So we only recognize the investment. So we budget for about Three and a half million was our was our goal uh, with our assumed rate, and we received closer to 11 million investment income. So that remaining uh, will be spread out over the next two years. We take the 8.5 million in the sewer bond and let the police pension fund invest it. <laughs> exactly. Well, the problem is now. Now we have to mix it with every, all the other funds. This is exactly the question I asked them when I was going through this with this whole controversy over putting all of the funds together down, down state. Because now they, they claim that the fees would be so much less that we would get a higher return. Well, when they start looking at some returns like this, that's not going to be the case most likely. Yeah, we did, we did very well last year. It's really going to help the smaller funds more than the bigger funds because we can we can invest 65% in the stock market. Smaller funds, less than 10 million in investments, are are restricted as yeah. to how much that they can put in. So it will help. I don't think it will hurt us any, but I think that uh, it will definitely help the smaller smaller funds. Well, I think what we need to do, um, Todd, is just kind of put a marker down and say this is when these funds were transferred down for management under the global yeah. um, consolidation of all the funds and then track the returns from there and do like a 10-year 10, 10 average or a five-year average and then a few years down the road do another five-year average. Sure. Every, I think everybody's going to be watching that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they claim that the – I was on many, many phone calls on panels, but they claim that the reduction in fees will outweigh what we could possibly get on our own investing our own funds, and there were a lot of people that weren't agreeing with that. And a lot of people understand that once you put the money down there, they'll find out a way to try to get their hands on it. So. Yeah, our fund has done well on the investment side. It's important uh, to vote. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so part of the increase, the total increase to the um, pension fund contribution was 135,000. We are still reducing the rate of our assumed um, investment return. We've um, it's going from 7% to 6.875%. We started this off at. Seven and a half percent, and we're, we've been going down an eighth of a percent. We did take last year off. Um, this won't increase our expenses any. It will just fund it earlier um, up front, uh, which will help us um, with with um, 
receiving investment returns on the money that's in our fund. So the better funded your you'll be supported by what percentage is ours funded now what our, percentage are we at we're at uh, 75 just over 75 what's the, what's the mark what's the date it needs to be up to 90 isn't there a date 40 what's that 2040 40, right yeah. yeah and where would that compare the 75 to most of the villages around we are doing better than most of the villages yeah. yeah definitely doing better we, we would be a, a little bit higher if we hadn't reduced the assumed rate of return, um, but 75% uh, is doing well. So we had, a, we had a number of retirements back in 2019. We didn't have any retirements from the pension fund in 2021. Um, we've had a number of proclamations though since then, so we've, we've had a lot of retirements. We did have four new hires to tier two, um, so that increases our contribution a little bit, which was offset by our investment returns. Uh, so currently, we have 23 in Tier 2 out of 58 active police members in the police pension fund. So we're almost half of our sworn officers are Tier 2. And so those um, benefits are, are quite a bit reduced. On the uh, equalized assessed value, I'm estimating we're going to be uh, 1235944 235,994,000. I'm not used to that big in numbers. We're still, we're still not at the peak of the, um, you know, of the housing market before the big crash. We peaked in 2009. Our EAV was one billion three hundred and sixty-six million. We're still one hundred and thirty million below uh, where we peaked in two thousand nine. So that's um, amazing. This does not include uh, those big buildings out in the Brewster Creek TIF, though. Yeah. Uh, so there's. I want to say there's seventy, eighty million in EAV out there. It expires twenty twenty-three. 2023, okay. <laughs> 2024 levy will be uh, including it. Uh, so I'm just estimating 3% uh, Cook, 4% DuPage. Um, over this uh, last year, Cook County was only at 0.07%. Uh, DuPage increased by 3.38%. Um, the last assessment, Cook County was 2019. So we've got one more year for that. Uh, so we take the tax, the burden, Cook County 39%, um, apply that. So Cook County's burden will be 4,718,000. Uh, the rate's gonna be about 1.1. Um, so down slightly from, from last year. DuPage County, uh, the burden is 7,129,000, um, 0.888. Seven million one hundred twenty nine thousand point eight 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 four is going to be the rate just like down slightly due to the mainly due to the EAV going up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Combined rate stays about the same. So here's the 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 pie. Um, DuPage County, the village is about ten percent. Same with Cook County, uh, still about ten percent. There's a big difference in school portion and things like that, but that's all just a factor of being in different counties and the way that it's. it's Dad, can you go back to the last slide? Thanks. I just want to. I missed one number. Thanks. They good? Got it. Uh, so the next step, we'll be advertising for the public hearing. Uh, we'll hold the public hearing October 19th. We'll also, the board will approve a 30 years. estimated levy, and then it, it um, will be adopted December. It needs to be filed by the last Tuesday in December. So let's drop that date. Just a quick question. When you run your EAV numbers, that's just basically something that you're predicting, correct? Yeah, I really... It's, it's all what, what is the timeline for that that the assessor 
run. What's, what's his cutoff on his timeline for EAB for the previous year? Do you know what that is? We get DuPage County's DuPage County EAV comes out in May, and uh, Cook County was a little late this year. Um, I think it was more like September. So they're factoring in all the sale prices up until probably, what, the first I, quarter of that year or something? I think they go through the, um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Trustee Daney might, might be. With the, the question on that, would, the reason why I'm getting at that is because next year I could see a very large increase in the EAV just because of the housing prices right now. They're quite a bit behind. They also, I think it usually takes about three years for it to catch up. Yeah. Well, it, it, that's, if it, that's, that's if it gradually increases. It hasn't gradually increased this year. Well, when it gradually, when it, when it, when it tanked. It goes fast, and when it comes well, back, it, it took takes a few forever. Years for it. it took a few years for it to go down. And 2009. Assessors are going to level it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, okay. the, um, I just thought it's good to point that out, that 3%. Obviously, people know that housing prices have went up more than 3%, but that's historical data. Right. Yeah, over the last, uh, Cook, uh, DuPage County over the last five years has been, um, just right around 4%. And this year it'll be around 8 <laughs> All right. All right. That was great. Yeah, unless anybody... It wasn't even that boring, Todd. Yeah, that's what made it. It wasn't even that boring. <laughs> that's, that's riveting. <laughs> we didn't get any jokes, though. Tried to get them in 25 words. Anybody have any questions? Or... Any other questions? Okay, Todd, thank you very much. That's all we have on the agenda. Thank you, uh, Chairman Daney. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Daney, seconded by Trustee Hopkins. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Hopkins? Yes. Daney? Yes. Danzi? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. We are adjourned. It was pretty encouraging.